In the previous videos we worked on pages. Now this time we'll add news articles. In the website they will be displayed ordered by publication date. So they'll need to have a column for that. Other than that they're very similar to pages. Let's get our hands dirty. We'll start by creating a migration. We'll just copy the pages migration and rename it to 005 create underscore articles. Now let's open it up and edit. First of all we'll change the class name so Codeignite will be able to find it. And then we'll look at the fields for our articles table. We need an ID so let's just leave that in. Next we'll need a title and a slug. Now let's change the order to pub date. It will just be a type of date. Leave body in and you know what? Let's try and see if we actually did a good job with the timestamps. Let's add a created column with a type of date time and a modified column also with a type of date time. Now we'll just name the table articles and in the down method we'll also need to drop that table. Okay, now open up the migration config file and set the migration version to 5. We'll go to our admin panel and run the migration. And of course we'll just check in PHP my admin if that table was created correctly. And it looks like it was. Here's all our fields and they have the proper types so it's time to move on. Now open up the main layout. We need to add an article link to the main navigation. Let's make it link to article and call it news articles. Now since articles are so like pages why not just copy the page model altogether. Let's do so and call it article underscore m dot php. Now open it up and let's clean it up. We'll rename it to article underscore m of course and then we'll search for page and replace all instances with article. Now let's delete all the methods that are custom for our pages model because we don't need them. Okay, it's time to configure our model further. We'll order by pub date, the most recent will come first and then by ID, also the sending. Now, uh, let's have a look at the parent class to see what else we have. Um, yeah, all right, here's timestamps and uh, we need to set those to true. So let's just copy this property and bring it into the article model and set it to true. Okay, time to set the rules for validation. Let's change parent ID to pub date. It will be a field called pub date and the label will be publication date. Now let's edit these rules. It needs to have an exact length of 10, which is exactly the length of an SQL date string. And also let's run it through XSS clean just to be safe. Uh, we can leave slug and body like they are. Now for the get new method, we can leave it like it is almost, but we'll just need to add pub date. And let's set the default value to today. Oh, wait a minute. I almost forgot to remove the callback for slug. In the website, we'll call an article by its ID, not by its slug. So there's no need for a unique slug here. Also, let's fix this typo here in exact length. Well, I guess that's all for the model. Okay, time to create the articles controller. Let's copy the page controller and rename it to article.php. Now open it up and let's rename the class as well. We'll need to call it article and then we'll do our search for page and replace it with article. Now there's an order method here and an order ajax method and let's just delete those. We don't need them. Right, now scroll down and let's also delete the unique slug callback method. Okay, now let's carefully walk through this controller to check what else needs to be edited. Well, we're loading the article model and that's a good thing. Now here we're fetching the articles, but we'll need to use the generic get method here. So let's change that. The subview looks okay and so does the layout loading. So let's move on to the edit method. Fetching or setting an article looks fine to me. Now loading parents is specific for pages so that can go. And there's our form and validation rules. And oh yes, we need to alter the fields to send to the array from post method. 
Let's switch parent ID with PubDate and then we'll save the article, that's all generic, and we'll load the view, okay? And the delete method looks fine as well. Okay, well, that was easy. Let's move on. Now let's repeat our little trick and copy the entire page view folder. We'll be ever so creative and call it article. Now there's some views that we do not need, so let's just delete them. That's login, order and order Ajax, and they're gone. And now let's open up the index view for editing. We'll just do our very famous search and replace here, just like so. And then we'll change the heading to news articles. The news article link looks good, so let's just leave that alone. But let's replace the parent column with PubDate. Now we can leave the loop as it is, except for the parent slug, which we'll replace with the PubDate value, of course. And that's it. Let's just check this in the browser. Okay, looking good. Now I wonder how many errors we'll see if we'll click add an article. Ouch, that's quite a lot. Let's just quickly open it up, the edit view. Mm, search and replace, that will take care of most errors. Okay, this all looks good to me. Let's remove the parent row and let's just copy the title row, like so. Now in the first row, we'll display publication date. Just change the field name to PubDate and the value will of course also be PubDate. Okay, title, slug and body can stay as they are. That's an HTML editor text area, so that's good. And that's it. Just one final check. Yep, all looking good. And the publication date is set to today. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could add a JavaScript date picker? Well, since we're using Twitter Bootstrap, let's search for a date picker that supports that. Okay, I think we found one. Let's see. Yep, that seems to work. Only it has the wrong date format. Uh, let's see. Uh, here's the options. Okay, seems like we can choose a format. Cool. And the way to call it looks good to me as well. Okay, well, let's download this guy. Now there's three folders here. Let's copy them and bring them into our project. Okay, we'll need to add them to our page head. So open up that view file and just duplicate this line here. And that one was called datepickers.css, like so. And then we'll just rinse and repeat for the JavaScript file as well. And I don't think we need the less file actually. Let's just go try without it. Of course, we'll need to add some JavaScript to the edit view as well. So let's copy that from the site. It's just basic jQuery, no need to do all this typing. Uh, if you don't know what this means, uh, you may want to follow the course jQuery in 30 days on Touch Plus. It's, it's really good. Okay, well, as you can see, we are binding the date picker method to anything that has a class of date picker. So let's just add that class to our date picker test field. Now let's see if we can make it work in one go. Yep, like a charm. Now I'm just not happy with the date, but as we saw earlier, that can easily be fixed. So we'll just add format as a parameter and then we'll set it to the proper SQL date format. Let's check that one more time. And yep, that's working. You know what? Let's just add a news article with a pub date in the past. We'll just welcome our man Chuck to the team. We'll just paste that into the slug as well. It's run through URL title anyway. And let's add some dummy text. Save it. And yeah, Chuck's been added. Open it up. Yep, all looking good. Okay, I'm in the mood. Let's add another one at today. Here's a news flash for you. The Dark Force strikes again. Death by Trey it shall be. And some more gibberish. And save. And now for the final article. Pick a date somewhere in between. And let's just add some really unimaginative title here. Okay, and that's it. Just save that. Notice how the articles are sorted by pub date in a descending order. Okay, just one more check. I'll just modify this article here like so and save it. And now let's check in PHP my admin to see if the modified date has been set correctly. And yeah, that looks good to me as well. So it's time for our final check. Let's delete this article here. Confirm. And yep, it's gone.
So that concludes the section on the admin panel. In the next video, we'll start coding the front end. I'll see you then.